This is gonna be fun. So, uh, this is an ESP32 microcontroller. It has Wi-Fi, and a few days ago I got an idea. What if I could make my own storage web server uh, by using this? Now, I could use something like a Raspberry Pi for this, uh, but uh, th th this seems like uh, way more fun, and uh, the power consumption here will obviously be much less than uh, on Raspberry Pi. So here I've got a few more components. Here I've got a small display, um, an SD card reader, and a single button, which I think will be all enough to create a storage web server. Uh, I'm choosing SD cards uh, because why not, they're just very small. Also uh, my internet, uh, which let's check here. Uh, so my internet speed is here around uh, 45 megabits uh, in upload, which is I think what, like uh, 5 megabytes a second. Uh, so I don't think the speed of the SD card will be an issue. This display will, I think, be good enough uh, to show basic information about the server. For now, uh, the goal is just to get this uh, to work locally, so I should be able to access this uh, server uh, over, for example, with my phone. Uh, but maybe in the future I can add things like port forwarding and basically trying to recreate something like Google Drive, which has many fancy features. Anyways, I'll get this hooked up uh, and I can get to work. So, uh, the basic uh, web server here works, it can connect to the Wi-Fi network and it can also serve a basic hello world uh, HTML file or a not found page. So the next step is to actually make a website for this little controller to serve to the browser. And uh, since I don't have much experience in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, uh, it will, I'm sure, be a learning experience. And uh, I'll make a time lapse uh, of the web page becoming a reality. So, cue the time lapse. So things seem to work just fine. As you can see, I can refresh the page here and it loads the page. This is directly from the microcontroller. Currently I'm sending chunks of 65 kilobytes, uh, which because of the RAM limitations is I hope good enough. There's currently an issue where uh, the icon before the file name doesn't load, uh, not sure why, and also the download button doesn't do anything still uh, but if you press here on image then it will open a new tab uh, with the image this is unfortunately uh, not a good uh, location so it does not find it but as you can see down here uh, it successfully triggered that we wanted to pull an image so the next step would be to get uh, this image to work, so hopefully it can fully download. So yeah, uh, let's get that to work. Let's see here, attempt number one. And it still returns the wrong image. Or I might just not have refreshed the page, let's try again. I forgot to refresh the page, but this still doesn't work. Uh, cool, so I cut off the eye from image it seems like, so let's fix that. Okay, attempt number two. Uh, Image.jpg does not start with slash. What? Okay, let's see here for the third time. Hey, 
there we go that works and and that that surely feels good man okay cool so and that is relatively quick how many kilobytes are we sending uh 80 kilobytes uh i need to put up a better image uh for this to be a test hold up Okay, so I've uploaded a five megabyte image. Uh, so it should show up here when I refresh the page. And that is very nice. Uh, so we have here 5.1 megabytes. Let's see how long this takes. Okay, so looking at the ESP32 here, <laughs> it froze, the display is not updating, uh, which is an issue, of course. So it jumped from 32 seconds to 55, so it took, what, like 23 seconds? I'd like to speed this up. So now is the time to do some more benchmarking. Uh, the microcontroller is currently running at 240 megahertz. I also think I didn't change the default clock speed of the SD card so I think I can increase that as well. The default speed of the SD card was set to 4 megahertz. I've bumped it up now to 40 megahertz which from what I've read online should work so we'll see that. I don't know is it is it any faster? Okay so we're at 48 so that was still 23 seconds so nothing changed that's very interesting. So the next step I'd do is probably change the buffer size. So currently uh, I'm using what like, uh, yeah, 65 kilobytes. Maybe if I increase that, something useful will come out of that. And that crashed the, okay, yeah, that, that won't work. So my final idea here is to change the CPU frequency to the maximum, which is 240 megahertz. Uh, so let's see if that speeds anything up. Uh, here we go. That seems to be slightly quicker, I'd say. 12 seconds in total, down from like, what was it? Uh, 23, I think. So that has significantly sped up things. So I was able to shave down a few more mil not milliseconds, seconds, uh, uh, because there's this stream file function, which uh, behind the scenes, it seems like fully compresses or does something with compression. I see here gzip and that goes down to on average 12 seconds. I've tested it a few times. What I've read online, uh, you can't do much more than this. The best improvement would be to directly uh, use pins from the SD card, which would give us uh, four pin parallel reads instead of SPI. Uh, and this could significantly improve things. Uh, but for now, uh, SPI is good enough. So maybe one day in the future. Uh, but for now, this is good enough. So when we're downloading the file, when I'm doing a right click save as, uh, as you can see, this happens. This should happen automatically when we press on download here. So I have to figure that out, uh, but that will be for tomorrow as it's already past midnight. So this currently works quite well. Uh, 500 kilobytes per second isn't some amazing speed, uh, but it's good enough for now. Uh, there are a few things I'd like to fix still. Uh, so currently, after you uh, disconnect the cable and basically uh, reconnect the power source, uh, the display stops working for some reason. Uh, I'll have to figure that out. Also, uh, when the client requests a web page, uh, which in the case of an image, uh, as it takes a few seconds, uh, the display stops refreshing. So I think I might be able to offload that to another core and then the display should be able to update still in real time. I'd also like to add uh, more information on the display. So things like 
how many bytes a second are being sent or in total how many bytes have been sent. Uh, this is a small display, but uh, it should be able to fit all of that information nicely. The last thing I'd like to add for this is something like serial communication with the computer here. Uh, and so that I can, for example, make my own command prompt, uh, which will then be able to generate links to files and things like that. Uh, why serial? Because uh, accessing this via a web browser might be more convenient, uh, but for security reasons. Uh, and yeah, that, that's more or less it. Uh, let's, let's, let's get to work. Okay, so I managed to fix the display not showing uh, issue with these stupid few lines of code. So for some reason, when I connect the power source, uh, the display doesn't show, but when I restart the microcontroller, then it always shows. Uh, so uh, I basically did that in code and it, it for some unknown reason that works uh, but, but but yeah this is this is very stupid okay so to finish up for the day uh, I did a few more things uh, first of all I removed the navigation bar here at the top because I already see that I won't be finishing that um, then I also fixed these icons. It turns out I just misspelled a CSS class name. I also added uh, the functionality for the download button. So now that fully works for both of these. And one new big thing that I've added uh, isn't this C++ code because this was mostly written by ChatGPT. Uh, thanks a lot. But what this does is it connects via serial communication to the microcontroller. So I've implemented some basic Linux file commands. So for example, if we do ls here, as you can see, uh, it shows the date modified, the file size, uh, this zero represents that it is not a directory and we have a file name. So we can also do things like print working directory, which just prints out this. We should be able to change our current directory, which does not seem to fully work. Uh, I'll have to look into that. And there should also be the remove directory and the remove file commands. So uh, it's the next day. Uh, I did a few things. First of all, I added the ability to uh, specify links, which are basically eight random uh, number or letter characters, which represent uh, a link with which you can uh, go to a specific directory on the microcontroller. This basically works so that you can send someone a link. In this case, it's all local, so it doesn't have much purpose, but in case something like this would be on a public network, then you would be able to send someone a link and they could access all of the files. I'm not sure that I mentioned that I added this, uh, in my opinion, fancy uh, data counter, which specifies how much total data has been sent. Uh, it, it also doesn't have much purpose, but it looks very fancy when you're actually downloading something. I also slightly changed up the layout of the page so that it works better on mobile. So as you can see here, uh, it works uh, just fine. It looks all right. It should also work fine in this orientation. Yep. Uh, so yeah, um, I'd consider this project pretty much done. So if I click on the image up here, uh, it loads up the web page. If I go back and load the second one, then it starts downloading, so this uh, this megabyte counter goes up. Uh, focus is very interesting, or is it exposure? I'm not sure. Anyways, uh, yeah, it, it, it works really nicely, and uh, it does everything I wanted it to do. The only issue currently is it's kind of slow at about uh, 500 kilobytes per second. So maybe in the future I might upgrade. Uh, the SD card uh, reading to be, to be 4 bit, which should increase the total speed. That is basically it for this video. Um, thanks for watching. If you would like to see, I guess, a part 2 where I test the 4 bit SD card mode, uh, as well as maybe 
design a case for this so that it's not on a uh, experimental board. Yeah, let me know down in the comments, of course. Uh, what else could I add? Yeah, also the the thumbnail, the grid system, which I ended up removing because uh, the list system is good enough. Let me know what you think of this new style of a video where I actually sit down and talk about things instead of just showing my uh, screen. Uh, but yeah, uh, thanks for watching and until next.